Okay, so now we're going to talk about what flies to use. And specifically, I'm going to be speaking about, we'll call them Western trout flies. Now, going to the fly shop can be an absolutely daunting thing. And you will see all kinds of flies. Um, that being said, you know, there are tried and true flies that are just better than others. And if you keep a box of these flies around, you will be good to go, not just here in Wyoming, but if you went over to Idaho, Montana, uh, you know, whatever. And if you're in a Western trout stream, you're gonna be fine. Okay, so let's start with this. So entomology is the study of insects. And for us, um, we wanna know about the bugs that are in the water. So graphically, it would be easier for me to, to describe it like this. I'm, I'm gonna do a little show and tell. So predominantly we have mayflies, we have caddisflies, we have stoneflies. And then I'm gonna throw in midges. Um, now a midge is a little, is a little worm-like critter. Um, they're very small on an 18, 20 size hook. Um, they're predominantly fished a lot in the winter, early spring. But let's get back to mayfly, caddisfly, stonefly. Okay, so if this arm represents the body of the fly, here's how this is the easy way to determine what kind of a fly it is. So, because it's about their wing case. If, if this is the body of a fly and this is the wing of the fly, mayflies have upright wings like so. So if you see them on the water, they look like this. Now you'll see an upright wing and you'll say, okay, that's a mayfly. If you see a fly where the wing case is more at a 45 degree angle like this, that is a caddisfly. And that's how you'll see them upright and at a 45. Now, I'm gonna change my hand completely because a stonefly, it's wings lay flat like so and they literally lay like this flat and stoneflies fly more like helicopters so mayfly caddisfly stonefly that's the easy visual okay um so the other thing to understand is there's flies that you'll call them, um, they would be in the world of match the hatch, look like the bug. And then there's flies that are called attractors. Now, and there's, there are going to be, there are some really, really good ones that I'm going to talk about. So in the, um, I want to talk about one other thing first before we get on to the actual flies. So, Think of it like this. Um, flies always start off as nymphs, and nymphs are in the are in the bottoms, in the rocks, in the sand, in the dirt, and they're crawling around and they're darting and they're and they're burying, and then at some point they'll come out, you know, they'll they'll come out on a rock like this, and as when when the time is right. Uh, in which, by the way, they spend a long time as, as a nymph or a larva. They're in a larva stage called a nymph. And then at some point, then they start, they let go of the rock and they start to, to rise to the surface to become an adult. And when they get to the surface, if this is the surface, they, they come up as a nymph like so, and they get to a point where they look like this, where they're partially out and partially in the water. This is called an emerger. This is where they're trying to shed their shuck and their case. And as they do that, they're trying to dry off the wing and eventually let, get up on the water like this and fly away. Now, the interesting thing about the adult fly, the adult fly can live anywhere from hours to a day or two, and that's it. And then they come back down as what they call spinners because you know they're a dead fly. But as a nymph, they can be in there a very long time, up to a year. The reason that I'm pointing this out 
while we all love dry fly fishing and and i'm one i'm one of them um, i i love hopper season is one of my favorites um, that being said this is important for you to know um, now depending on whose books or whatever you're reading it can be as high as 90 but i'm going to say 80 because that's you know generally again i'm going to call that the uh, industry standard if you want to say it that way so fish feed 80 percent of the time and they get 80 percent of their diet subsurface now the reason that i'm pointing that out is because if there's not a really good hatch going on or you don't have an attractor that's drawing a fish up from the bottom there's not a big reason for a fish to be drawn up to the surface when they can sit here and do this what happens is and and remember the slowest part of the current is against the bottom so a fish um, if that's the rock and and the first thing that i do when i step into a, when i step into a river the first thing i do is i reach down I grab a rock, I pick it up, turn it upside down, and you will see all of the bugs walking around, crawling around on it. And you can look at them, and if you're educated enough to know the difference between a mayfly nymph or a caddis nymph or a stonefly nymph, you can say to yourself, oh, okay, so it's this nymph and it's about this size. Put the rock back and gear up and go. Now, how this is gonna work, um, is the nymph is going to come out from the bottom of the rock and they're gonna get here. Now the fish are laying here like so. And the nymphs start to come up and they snag them. The nymph comes up, they snag them. The nymph comes up, they snag them. They do this 80% of the time and that's how they get 80% of their diet. Now, as they start to emerge, of the emergers that finally get to the surface, only 50% of those emergers ever become adult. Because again, you know, they're taking the emergers. Now, I'm, I'm saying this because learning how to fish nymphs, learning how to nymph fish is very, very important. Because, you know, you could be out there a day when there's nothing happening on the surface. There's always something happening subsurface. It's very important to learn about nymph fishing. And truly, as we talk through this, there are three nymphs, three nymphs. If those are the nymphs you had, you will be golden. Okay, so here I have an assortment of flies out. So we'll we'll do this as mayfly, caddisfly, stonefly. Um, then we have to think about streamers. We have our nymphs, and I want to talk. I want to talk about terrestrials as well. Uh, a couple of things I want to I want, also want to point out is that is that every fly that you see here is available to purchase in a fly shop online. However, you want to do it. Uh, I, I said tying flies because um, I do enjoy tying flies. I don't, um, I'm not going to spend the time to do it on a lot of flies. Um, flies can be expensive, and, but so can fly tying. But yes, they're all available um, in, in a store. And another question that is always that always comes up is, well, how often should I change a fly? You know, that's an interesting question because I have seen some flies that are so beat up that you, I wouldn't fish them. I fished with a guy one time. Uh, what the, I'm trying to think of what fly it was. I think it was some variation of, of, of one of these um, stimulators. And he'd, he'd had so many strikes on it that it was, the thread was coming unraveled and it was just hanging here and yet for some reason fish were hitting it. Now for me, I, you know, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is check the hook. If you get a lot of snags or something like with a nymph, you know, if you start losing the, the, um, um, the sharpness, you can buy a sharp, you can carry around a hook sharpener and you can, you can resharpen them. So mostly it's just how, how beat up does the fly get? And if fish are not reacting to it the way they were you know, several casts ago, um, then you might want to go ahead and, um, and change it out. The other thing, as I was talking, and I said size, uh, once again, back when we were talking yeah. about tippet and leader, you know, um, uh, a, a small, like that fly right there, that's probably, 
a 14 or a 16 versus this. I'm going to use Stronger Leader to cast this fly than I am that fly. And I'm going to use Stronger Leader to cast this than that. And so when we talk about flies and sizes, they um, not only do you want to have a variety of that, but keep in mind that's why you want to have a variety of tippets and leaders so that you can interchange as necessary. So the, um, again, I, you know, you can, you can find all kinds of flies in the store, but I'm, I'm going to talk about a few. I should also stop at this point and, uh, and, and talk about size and color because they're both very important, um, especially if you are trying to match the hatch, then it's not a great idea if you're trying to throw, if, if, if what's hatching is a, I don't know, is a size, uh, I don't know, say uh, a 16 and you're trying to throw a size 12, that won't look very natural or if the color is more gray and you're casting a green color. Um, now, now, when you're searching, if you're searching, if you're searching, and you're not you're not out there in the middle of a hatch where you're not trying to do that, then um, it's it's not quite as important. Now you're just trying to entice the fish into a strike. 